I have uh, segmented my presentation into uh, six different categories. It's pretty easy. It's a bad story, good story, bad, good, and then ended with a good story. The reason I did that is because I'm hoping you can reflect how we can make a better future for our society. So I'll start with the bad story first. So I was at a grocery store about two years ago, and I saw this beautiful lady. She was walking by looking for something in the aisle. I kind of, uh, I actually ended up following her because she was pretty. <laughs> But while I was doing that, I noticed that she was looking for something specific, something she was looking for in the aisle that she wasn't able to find. So while I was following her, I realized that she was looking for a staff where she can communicate with her. So she found her, she did. Uh, as I was watching her, both the staff member and this lady, they were getting frustrated. And the reason is, she was a deaf person. She wasn't able to communicate the way we do in our world. So what I have learned from that is it's not an easy life they have. They don't. But as I was wondering, when I went back home, actually before I say that, while I was watching her at the end, what happened was she became so frustrated that she walked away from the grocery store empty-handed with teary eyes. She wasn't able to get what she wanted because she wasn't able to communicate. So when I went back home, I wondered, why is that? Why didn't she just write on a piece of paper what she's looking for? Turns out, because they're deaf, their first natural language of speaking is sign language. So if you let them or ask them to write, that's how they feel. They are not comfortable just the, we are, the way we are when I'm speaking to you right now. So this was two years ago. That's the bad story. Here I am. Two years after, I have something to share with you, and it's a good story. And for that, I need a volunteer, and I actually have someone who volunteered to come here and help me out. Mike, who is my colleague at the Rotary International, is going to uh, help me demonstrate the good story about it. So as he is coming here, pretend that he cannot hear. Pretend that he is that beautiful lady I have met at the... <laughs> <laughs> so pretend that's what it is. He cannot hear me. So two years back, if I wanted to tell her something, I will not be able to communicate. But today, in Tariq's world, in our baby taxi, the company, we were able to change that. And I will show you a demonstration. So for imagine, Mike is the beautiful lady. And I wanted to tell her that day, good morning, just to make her day. How can I do that? I don't know how to speak their language, but I do have a program which can. So what I'll tell Mike, good morning. And he would understand. Just to make her day a little bit better, instead of her walking away frustrated, I would tell her, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. And Mike would understand that. And he would say, hey, you're a nice person. At the end, <laughs> at the end, and the reason I tell you this last word, there is a story behind it. I'll tell you after I say it. I love you. So Mike would understand that, and he would come and give me a hug. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. So that's just, that's a little bit of what we have done. And the reason I say the I love you part was important is because when we were building our software, we wanted to ask the deaf population about what are the sentences they would like us to convert. Turns out the most popular one was I love you because their significant others could not hear and they wanted to communicate in such a way so that they can relate to what they're saying. So that's the good story. Uh, what we are doing as a company is we're taking uh, gesture recognition technology 
understanding what it does and then convert it into uh, text and voice. What you have seen is the one way where I wanted to tell him. At the end of the presentation, I will show you how it works the other way around. When I do my sign language, it will actually talk to you in text and voice so the deaf population can understand. Before we were able to build this software, we needed to know, uh, we needed to understand what this population is about, what do they need, how do they interact with us, and what do they, what we need to understand them before we can actually build the software. So we did some digging around, we've got some information, and there are some data I would like to share with you. What we have found is three million Canadians have impaired hearing. 5% of that world population has hearing loss. If you do the calculation, that equals to 360 million deaf or hard hearing people. 32 million are adults, uh, no, sorry, 32 million are kids, and 328 million are adults. When I present this data, this is a bad story. The reason I say that is because when I present this to you, this is a lie. And the reason I say this, this is a lie, is because when we were doing our research to build the software which we are hoping will advance the communication for our barrier for the deaf, is when we did the research, we went to various different places. If you go to Wikipedia, it will tell you that the range of population in America for the deaf population is between 500,000 to 2 million. 500,000 to 2 million, what is the actual data? Then if you go to a different website, it will tell you seemingly straightforward that the question does not have a simple answer. So there's really no data available. Then I go to the Canadian Deaf Association and they tell me that the statistics on the deaf Canadian are hard to collect because no two organizations have the same numbers. That's the bad story. And the reason I shared this is because I just learned this over the six months. For me, I thought building the software will be a challenge. Turns out getting data for the deaf population is a challenge. Now to me, I'm not a professor who specializes on this subject, neither am I a highly intellectual person who can have intelligent or conversation with you about this data I just shared, but I can tell you one thing, as a human being, this is discrimination. This is total discrimination. Here I am, brown-skinned, when I was growing up, I thought there's social issues, African-American minorities. Well, guess what? They're not minorities any anymore. That's gone, that's history. What we're dealing with right now is the deaf population. We don't even have a single research data which is quantifiable, proven, which has a stamp that this is the number. 500,000 to 2 million, that is not acceptable. The good news is because of what we are doing, we were able to partner with IRAP, which is a national nonprofit organization. UBC, we are on the talks. Any day we'll find out, and we are doing, making it into an academic research program. We will be actually going out to uh, the field, the countries, to find out what the actual numbers are. Now, as I was putting this presentation together, I thought, this is TED. Millions of people watch it. Maybe I can get some idea. So I did a quick Google research. I went to TED to find out if there is a speech or a talk that was given for the American Sign Language. Turns out, zero. You, audiences here, are the first one listening to a TED talk about ASL, American Sign Language. This needs to stop. This cannot be the way it is. When you see this, this is, I don't have a word except the word pathetic in the most nicest way I can think of. So the good story is we're actually starting the research. Now I'll tell you another bad story. It's bad, but it's a reality that we need to listen to ourselves and find out what we're doing. I come from a country called Bangladesh. When I was growing up, I was told there is a word called boba. Boba, what it means is deaf. 
So when I was researching all this, I thought, wait, the way I remember the word boba is actually something else. It means a crazy person. So when I did the Bengali to English dictionary translation, it actually tells you boba, which is actually a deaf person, is actually dumb, speechless, and mute. That's discrimination right there, again. So I'll tell you a story. We went to Bangladesh about two years ago, and we were playing cricket. We had to take a boat uh, to crow, cross a river, and then we went to a small village, and we were playing cricket with the local uh, kids. As we were playing, my dad, he was throwing a ball. There's this sound which came out. It was like, ah, ah, weird, scary noise. So I had to ask that person, the villagers, the kids, who is making this noise, which is so scary? What they told me was, this is a boba. He's a crazy person. You don't want to deal with them. He's a pago. Pago means crazy. Now that I think of it, maybe he was actually not a crazy person. But because of the society and the way the culture sees the deaf person, he was labeled a crazy person. So I intend to go back there and find out what is really going on with this individual. This is not just where in Bangladesh, this is all over the world, this is happening. People need to be educated about what deaf population is about. What's interesting is that across the river, he lives in that small tiny hut, and he is actually shackled in chains because they're scared of him, because the way he speaks doesn't make sense. How can he? Because he cannot understand, he cannot hear, so he's trying to communicate it in his own way. Turns out, he's probably not a deaf person, at all. he's not a crazy person at all. So just wanted to share with you this, because when we are building this software, this is a whole different world of a population, a segmented population, that we did not realize how neglected they were. So that's my story. And now I would like to end with a something we, we hope will revolutionize the way the deaf population is treated. We want to give the deaf population a voice. We want to give them voice to communicate with us. So as I tell you that, what we have built in our program is the ability for us to recognize this gesture technology and actually convert it for us. So right now, if I tell you in sign language, you will not understand. Imagine I'm a deaf person, and with this software, he will communicate with you. And this is what we'll say. Together. We can change the world. Thank you. My last wish, my only wish, and it's a very simple one. Audiences, when you see this, please share this. Talk to your family, friends, everyone. And for the viewers out there online who's watching this, share this. Share what we have been going through. Uh, people in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, Brazil, anywhere. When you see this video, please share it so that we can tell our civilization, our culture, what, we, what has the segment of a population who has been neglected for so long. Help us get the word out. Like us on babytaxi.ca. Like us on Facebook at Baby Taxi. Let's start a, car, a conversation. And let's try to make a better world for us and for the future. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>